Welcome back to Master Glass. I'm your host, Livio, and today I'm gonna to show you the versatility of Grand Marnier as I show you how it fits in four different cocktails in four completely different ways with cocktails that are completely different. Low ABV, medium ABV, high ABV, warm, hot, cold weather. Let's go. In this video, I'm gonna just show you the versatility of Grand Marnier and how it can be utilized not only in different ways, but also how it's versatile in different styles of cocktails. So the first drink I'm gonna make here is a low ABV version. Let's just call it something very nice and spritzy. And I'm gonna show you how well Grand Marnier works in a nice low alcohol drink. Just like that, okay. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and start with three ounces or 90 mils of Prosecco. Uh, a 90 mil or a three ounce is a 12, a 12 count with a medium low stream, just like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay? So there is my three ounces. Now to this, I'm going to add just a half an ounce or 15 mils of Grand Marnier. Now what is Grand Marnier? It's a cognac based orange liqueur. And uh, I really have a cool video that you should watch, which I will add to the end of this video to take a look at it so you can learn a little bit more about it. We're also gonna add, add a half an ounce or 15 mils of Aperol. There we go. So right now we have three half half. We're gonna add another half an ounce, this time of fresh orange juice, just like that, okay. And last but not least, I'm gonna top this with just a touch of soda, just like that. Add a few more ice cubes. Let's give this a nice little stir. Okay. So what we have here is a really cool combination of orange flavors, Prosecco, the bubble, which is nice and acidic, and the bubbles from the soda water. I'm gonna garnish this with a pretty traditional spritz style of a garnish, and that is a half of a slice of an orange. And we're gonna set that right there. Okay, and I'm gonna set that there. I'm gonna move on to the next drink. The drink, next drink I'm gonna make is a is gonna be a margarita. So in here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rim the glass to get a nice little lime wedge. Actually, I should say to do that, I need to cut a nice little lime wedge, okay. Now I really only want the moisture on the outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do this. The firm hand, I'm gonna to try to keep the distance on the wedge the same. This way, when I go ahead and rim the glass, the line of salt will be as close as possible to perfect. Now, give this a little rim. Just like so. Now I am rimming the entire glass because I really love the briny, salty flavor in a margarita. But if I didn't, I would only be rimming half the glass. In here, we're gonna go ahead and add ice. Nice, like that. I'm gonna move these out of the way so you can get a better visual. And in this shaker tin right here, I'm going to go ahead and add ice. Now, because Grand Marnier is a uh, is cognac based, so therefore there's some wood involved, we're gonna add a woodsy type of tequila. So in this case here, I'm gonna use Espolón Añejo. In this mixing glass, I'm gonna go ahead and add one and a half ounces, also known as 45 mils of Espolón Añejo. We'll set that here. And the next ingredient is the modifier. So whereas in this cocktail here, we were showcasing uh, Grand Marnier as a base, it was predominantly the most, 
the highest in alcohol ingredient in the drink. Over here we're out now, we're using it as a modifier, meaning the, the, the base of the cocktail is the tequila. Grand Marnier is now playing a really good supporting actor in this cocktail, which again showcases the versatility. You can use it for one thing and you can use it for another. Uh, why is that? Because uh, Grand Marnier is 40% alcohol by volume, which means it has a highly alcoholic backbone. But because it has that uh, orange flavor to it, but a dry orange flavor, it could work as a liqueur and it could also work as a spirit, which is really cool. Now in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add actually one and a half ounces of fresh lime juice. Just like so. And I'm gonna finish it with just a half an ounce of simple. Okay. Let's give this a nice shake. Okay. We're gonna pour that right here over some fresh ice, just like that. And now just a good old classic margarita garnish, which is a nice lime wheel. And I have a tendency of putting the lime wheel in the glass uh, not uh, on the rim because on the rim it looks to me like Mickey Mouse only has one ear. So in this case here, it kind of looks a little bit more complete if you ask me. And uh, there you have drink number two, which is the Margarita Rocks, the Añejo Margarita Rocks made with Grand Marnier. So now let's move on. I'm gonna actually change the order of these two here. So I have Grand Marnier as a base. I have Grand Marnier as a modifier. And in this case, Grand Marnier is in a low ABV cocktail. In this case here, it's in a high, I mean a medium ABV cocktail. Now I'm gonna put it in a high ABV cocktail. To do that though, I'm also going to showcase yet another way Grand Marnier can be used. And that is just as an accent. What is an accent? means we're gonna just put a little drop in here, just like that, okay? It's not even the supporting actor anymore. Now it's just kind of really on the side, just helping everybody get together better. Okay, so in this case here, I have basically coated my glass with Grand Marnier. I'm going to get rid of the excess liquid, just like that. And then in this glass here, I'm gonna chill it I'm just going to put some crushed ice. There we go. Nice and easy. I'll set that there. And then over here, I'm going to take a beaker. Fill with ice. This is going to be a stirred drink, nice and boozy. And just to showcase the simplicity here, I'm just gonna make a Manhattan. And in the Manhattan, I'm going to, in the Manhattan, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, uh, add that little accent of Grand Marnier, which is already in the glass. Okay. Gonna give my beaker a nice little chill here. All righty. Set that here, let's get rid of any water that is not desired. Okay, so a couple of dashes of bitters. One, two. We're going to add two ounces of Wild Turkey Russell's Reserve 10 year bourbon. There's one and a half, and there's two. Now I'm gonna add one ounce of Cinzano Sweet Vermouth. Always remind you that the uh, vermouth stays in the fridge when you're not using it. There's one ounce of that. 
So now in this glass, or in this mixing glass, I should say, the beaker, I have two ounces of Wild Turkey Russell's Reserve, 10-year bourbon. I have one ounce of Cinzano Sweet Vermouth. I have two dashes of Angostura Bitters. And in this glass right here, I have a rinse of Grand Marnier. Let's go ahead and give this a nice stir. In this case here, we're gonna, we're gonna go for about 25 to 30 seconds. We need that dilution. We need this drink to get really, really cold and to have some water in it so that it will become more palatable because otherwise it'll be too harsh. And so once again, another completely different style of drink in which we're showcasing the Grand Marnier. Okay. Now if you could smell it, which I can, uh, you can see that the orange from the Grand Marnier is in this glass. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fill it up. Just like that. And now we're gonna just grab some Luxardo Maraschino cherries. I'm gonna just take one, stab it in just like that and place it right here. And there you have the Grand Marnier Manhattan or the Manhattan with a Grand Marnier accent. Which leads me to the last one. So we talked about low ABV, medium ABV, high ABV, we talked about base spirit, we talked about, or base spirit low ABV, we talked about modifier, we talked about accent. Now we're gonna make a drink where, again, the Grand Marnier is going to be the base spirit, but this case here, it's gonna be a hot drink. And so after dinner, desserty style. The first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just heat up my glass, just like I would chill a glass with cold water. If I'm making a cold cocktail, I'm going to warm up this glass with warm water uh, to make this hot cocktail. I'm just gonna let it sit for a few minutes. Okay, so at the touch, this glass is warm enough. I'm gonna go ahead and just plop a little sugar cube in here. Now to this, I'm gonna go ahead and add, go ahead and add, go ahead and add <laughs> three ounces of hot coffee, just like that. That's gonna kinda kickstart getting the sugar cube to melt. I'm gonna give this a little stir because I want that sugar cube to melt. Start the melting process, there it is. Now to this here, I'm gonna add one ounce or 30 mils of Grand Marnier. Just like that. And then again, good opportunity to give this a stir. Once I put the final ingredient, which is gonna be fresh cream on top, it's gonna to be a little bit more difficult to start mixing this. So give, get a, give it the Grand Marnier, the sugar and the coffee a good opportunity to just kind of blend together. And then last but not least, I'm gonna take some cream and I'm just gonna whisk it real quickly. Okay. So when I take a look at it, and if I, when I see that the cream is, is sticking really nicely to my little coil there, then I know that it is about as good as I want it to be. And the reason why I don't want it to be nice and too fluffy is I want to float this on top. So let's go ahead and pour this on top. Okay, just like that. So now what I have here, and of course what is a variation to an Irish coffee is I have this really cool cognac, orange cognac coffee made with Grand Marnier. So final recap, low ABV, base is Grand Marnier, medium to heavy ABV over here. Here I have a high ABV cocktail, a Manhattan, with a Grand Marnier, in this case, served as an accent. And last but not least, Grand Marnier back as a base in the cocktail, but this time it's a hot, winter style cocktail. This just showcases the versatility of Grand Marnier, but let me be the judge of that. Mm. Easy, brunchy, summery, low ABV, refreshing, thirst quenching, just the right amount of orange and a, a awesome right amount of bubbles. Mm. So good. Next is of course the margarita. In this case, it's an Añejo margarita. America's favorite cocktail here, so I don't think this is gonna disappoint. 
Mm. Yes, and Grand Marnier in this case really holds the strength that is coming from the big body and the big vanilla oaky notes of the Añejo tequila. Grand Marnier, because it's aged, because it's coming from cognac, also does a really good job at holding up and creating a very well-balanced drink. I'm interested to seeing if the Grand Marnier is gonna come through nicely or not in this Manhattan, because it's just a few drops. Mm. And it does absolutely. That coating of the glass with the Grand Marnier just added a such a gentle and appropriate amount of Grand Marnier. Now, truth be told, again, Grand Marnier is extremely versatile, which means in this case, I could have actually backed off a lot of the vermouth and added more Grand Marnier, and it still would have tasted well. That's for two reasons. Manhattans have range, which means you can make them in different ways and they typically will always taste good. But also Grand Marnier has range, as you can see from uh, how they fit in different, how it fits in different quantities and in different cocktails. And last but not least, my Grand Marnier coffee. It is the crack of summer right now. This is June and this is the least appropriate summer drink, yet this is the one that I literally want to sip on right now for uh, a couple more minutes because it is just perfectly balanced. I mean, we're spot on with the amount of sugar, the orange flavor from the Grand Marnier, the cognac flavor or uh, kick from the Grand Marnier with the coffee and the cream. So like I said, I have a really cool video on Grand Marnier, how it's made, all the different expressions, and I'm gonna leave a link below and the banner at the end of this video, and thanks for watching.